Weather radars. They're colorful, scientific, and confusing. Or are they? Chances are that you've seen a weather radar either on a phone app or the news during a big thunderstorm. These weather radars may look like some new age interpretive art, but actually have scientific uses that may reveal many details about an ongoing storm. In this video, I'll be going over some of the different types of radars and how they can be used to spot supercellular features and tornadoes. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, click the bell so you never miss an upload. With that over, we will first be going through a brief history of how weather radars were discovered. A brief history. Weather radars were first discovered by military radar operators during World War II who misinterpreted storm echoes for incoming enemies. After the war ended, David Atlas, a former Air Force radar operator, went to work and developed the world's first weather radar. Since the first real weather radar was created in the 1950s, they have gone through many phases which have shaped the way they look today. When tracking severe weather and tornadoes, I use three main types of radar. Reflectivity, velocity, and correlation coefficient. The first type of weather radar we will be looking at will be reflectivity. Reflectivity. Reflectivity is used to determine the intensity or size of precipitation falling in a given area. The colors blue and green represent lighter precipitation, yellow and orange represent mild to heavy precipitation, and red to white represent extremely heavy rain and or hail. DBZ is what we use to measure the intensity of precipitation and size of hail. During tornadic events, reflectivity radar can be used to determine debris balls, as well as hooks and embedded supercells. Debris balls. Debris balls are heavier areas of DBZ and tornadic supercells that indicate a damaging tornado on the ground. When a debris ball is present, the National Weather Service will issue a confirmed tornado even if there are no reported sightings on the ground. Hooks and embedded supercells. Another way reflectivity radars can be used to identify tornadoes is by spotting certain shapes like hooks or embedded cells in a QLCS storm. A QLCS, or quasi-linear convective system, is a storm that has grown upscale into a line. Hook-shaped storms are the most obvious example of rotating supercells that can create tornadoes and can be identified by their fishhook shape. Identified embedded supercells is another one of the uses that reflectivity radar can have when spotting tornadoes. To identify an embedded supercell, first look for a debris ball in the mix of lighter DBZ values. If you cannot find a debris ball, look for a kink in the QLCS line. Finally, if this strategy does not work, you may want to switch over to velocity radar. Velocity. Velocity radar is possibly the most essential radar type when spotting tornadoes. Velocity radar can be used for identifying tornadoes, updrafts, and obtaining relative wind gusts from derechos and other windstorms. When using velocity radar, red and brown pixels indicate water droplets traveling away from the radar, while green and blue pixels indicate water droplets moving towards the radar. While using velocity radar, you should look for what's called the TVS, or Tornado Vortex Signature, within the cell. The National Weather Service will likely warn a tornado solely off radar scans, even if there are no reports or debris balls out of caution. To determine the strength of the strongest ongoing tornadoes, meteorologists turn to correlation coefficient radar. Correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient radar is likely a last resort for many National Weather Service offices when issuing tornado warnings. They are just used to upgrade tornado warnings from radar indicated to radar confirmed. Most of the time, warnings will already be issued long before a TDS or tornado debris signature will be visible on correlation coefficient radar. Tornado debris signatures. When a TDS is spotted, the correlation coefficient radar will signify it by showing dark blue or in rare cases, black. Conclusion Weather radars, of all types, are essential tools for meteorologists to use in the protection of human life from tornadoes and other storms. The number one factor driving the enhancement of radars is the safety of the people. As the weather radar continues to evolve, more and more lives will be saved. I hope you learned something from this video. Who knows, it may even save your life someday. If you made it this far, go down to the comment section and type in your favorite type of weather. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more weather content. See you guys next time. Goodbye.